Welcome back, everyone, to another uh, Real Estate Notes show. Um, your host, Dave Putz, and actually, we'll be talking today about originating notes in creative financing and talking about RMLO work from a broad scale. But before I get along, get too far ahead of myself, my co-host, Mr. Nathan Turner. How are you, man? Good. Really good. Oh, it's been it's a busy that week. Time of year. It's that time of year. It's a, uh, it, we're... Yeah, it's been a busy week, but it's been good. It's been good. Yeah. So I think for us, it's just kind of really getting into the thick of things in the summertime, right? And for those out there, I'm sure you're juggling kids and family and birthdays and holidays, as well as the note spot. You know, that kind of area is sometimes a little bit difficult to juggle all of it. Um, it can be tough. We'll definitely kind of help you through it in the process. For sure. And one of the areas we've been hearing a lot from people out there is this whole idea about Armalo and unsure about what it all means. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a tough one. Um, going back, you know, for those trying to figure out that work life balance, I, I heard something oh, a couple of years ago that helped put it in perspective for me. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as perfect balance. So don't don't try to get there because there is no such thing. Uh, the guy that I was listening to, he talked about it being spinning plates. You, you know, those circus guys that have the spinning plates, you yep. spin one plate, that's your work life. You can spin another plate, that's your home life. You do another plate, that's your hobbies. You know, another plate, that's yeah. whatever. Different things you're doing. At different times, each one of those things is going to need more attention. So you Makes spend sense. the time on the thing that needs attention at that time, and then you move on to the next. That's balance. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like one thing just rocks and roll, right? You're juggling, you're constantly juggling all of it. And how constantly. you juggle is the biggest question. Constantly. But yeah, yeah. RMLOs. So we've talked a lot about um, just in those last probably year and a half, a lot about people that are originating notes and creating notes and just the importance of doing it properly. Uh, Cause we've seen, and we continue to see notes where they're, they're coming in and they're just, they're just not done properly they're not done in a way that will get you the best uh the best purchase price yeah so if you're doing it properly if you do it the right way we'll actually pay you more so it let's back up really there right why price. does someone want to sell a note right why does this matter and for me you don't have to ever sell a note you can create these and do a really good job of creating all these assets yeah and this show is not this episode is not only about selling it, out, but creating it in a way that's legal for right. the fact that if you ever have this note default, you're back behind law and security. The fact that you can literally turn around and foreclose on the borrower. What we're Absolutely. finding a lot of paper out there, we came to buy because we know we can't foreclose on it. Right. Right. And you that's can't either. Issue. That's the issue. And why does somebody want to sell a note? So here's an example. So I went to Tom Henderson's uh, class here couple of months ago. And he told us about how, I mean, Tom's a legend. He's been around forever. I mean, he's a guy that I aspire to be like, and he was talking about how uh, he had a bunch of notes and he's got, you know, monthly income coming in. Fantastic. And then he had pneumonia three times in one year that added a whole bunch of medical expenses that he wasn't planning on. So in order to get a more lump sum of cash that he needed right then he sold some notes that could be a reason that you might want to sell some notes just because you need a lump sum of cash for who knows what kids going off to school. You want to renovate the kitchen. Yep. I mean, who knows what there's all kinds of different reasons. You'll need a lump sum today uh, where it makes it worth it for you to go out and sell a note. Yeah. And I think that most people, if they want to recapitalize that there's all kinds of reasons to sell a note, but I think you don't want to remove that extra strategy. Yeah. Right? That extra strategy, that open. possibility of needing to get capital needs to be there. Right. Right. And, the, and besides the selling part, like we were saying before, like, what about a foreclosure? What if they, they stop paying and then you have to go through the legal process. If your note is not done properly, you're going to have a very difficult time foreclosing. Uh, and that's going to be all kinds of, yeah, trouble that you just don't want. Yeah. So if you can Absolutely. do it properly upfront, you can plan for all these things that are going to happen two, five, 10 years down the road that you could never foresee. And a lot of misinformation out there about what is it like to create a note correctly, right? You, anyone can create a note wrong. 
I yeah. think that correctly part is really, really um, big on stuff, right? I've done um, it so we make sure uh, that's available, right? Yeah. So, uh, so one more thing before we bring yep. our guest on here, DME Diversified Mortgage Expo is coming up. Uh, you you want to get your tickets sooner than later? Early bird pricing runs out on Tuesday next week. That is the last day to get early bird pricing. So get your tickets. Uh, use Dave's link, but make sure you get your tickets because that's it's coming up soon. If you want to spend an extra hundred bucks next Wednesday, okay, I'm okay with that, but <laughs> save yourself money, uh, get your tickets sooner than later. And your hotel. And also for room lock, those out there, uh, we just launched our um, ebook for due diligence. Yeah. Uh, if you are curious about that, please feel free to jump in there um, and uh, take a look at that on our website. Well, um, with yeah, that said- uh, we have our ebook out there. That's exciting. That's good. So the DME is coming up in a month. Just over today. a month. Hopefully just over you a fly month. in there. Take a look at that. Um, I actually just bought my plane tickets yesterday. So <laughs> I bought mine, yeah, about a week and a half ago. Everything is good. I'm locked in to go Thursday and whatnot. So yeah, exciting. It's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Let's bring him in. Nick. Sorry about the little confusion here. I'm not sure of my internet, whatever going on, but we'll figure it out. So Nick, I think we, what most people are looking to find out more about you is who are you, right? Who are you? Most people like ourselves never heard of you, right? And it's amazing to hear that there's this space is small. As I'm sure you know, to hear about there's someone out there that is licensed in this many States doing arm work is awesome and i know this isn't always um a field you're in, in but i'm sure that our group our tribe will kind of find you and then go from there yeah well thank you guys for having me but yeah i'm uh definitely a seasoned real estate investor and that's what brought me into this industry uh but right now i'm a licensed lender and uh we're actually in 23 states and then DC, so 24 total uh, that we can cover. <clears throat> and we love to work with investors, so definitely love to speak with your crowd here. Uh, yeah. Not our typical investors, right? We're typically looking at the takeout end of things and uh, financing out of uh, short-term or seller finance notes or other creative financing. But I'm always interested in helping our clients get into creative financing as well. And I actually have a... Uh, uh, I'm on the other end as well. I actually have a commercial space with seller financing. So as a investor, I take advantage of your clients here uh, when it's when it's out there, right? So I have a, a commercial space uh, that's actually a restaurant nightclub uh, where I got a seller finance note at a 6%. So obviously not the rates that you guys want to hear about. Uh, that was uh, quite a while ago, but definitely in the space personally. Uh, so I've been investing for over 10 years. Uh, and as I mentioned, have some seller finance, uh, done all kinds of creative finance, second finance, all kinds of different ways that I do it myself to get creative. Uh, don't own any notes myself. So I appreciate all you guys doing that end of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what brought me into real estate. I have a real estate company here in Miami called Miami Real Estate Agency with about 40 agents. And then uh, also the mortgage companies, kind of the uh, fruition of being an investor for over 10 years, getting into doing my own uh, real estate purchases, sales, all that stuff for any flips I'm doing. And then obviously the natural progression was to get into the finance end, but you know, more of the traditional finance uh, is, is kind of where I come from. So not afraid to get licenses and all that stuff, been doing that for many years and uh not afraid to start businesses. A lot of different businesses I have. I own about gotcha. 10 different uh, businesses and all kinds of different industries, but uh, real estate's kind of my mojo. So come from uh, being an investor for over 10 years myself and uh, definitely love to do it for everybody else and, and spread the word out there for people to get creative and use people like you guys. So I'm definitely into it. I just uh, haven't been on this side of things. So I appreciate you guys having me on. So cool. how long ago did you get into actually the the Armalo work and that business of creating these DSS, DSCR loans? How long have you been doing that kind of work? Uh, so it's been about five years now. So I started, okay. uh, I do, I have a lead generation company. So I do a lot of lead generation uh, and I was hired by a bank. 
and the bank uh, FDIC bank was all 50 states and it was uh, very easy to advertise you know nationally uh, but as my interest was investor base and uh, that's kind of where I was leaning towards we didn't have outlets for investors right so uh, the bank space was not creative for me it was not conducive for my clients and my typical investors out there uh, so we built a big team at a broker shop um, because we were generating millions of dollars in business, but it wasn't the types of business that we really wanted to do. So we took that to a broker model where we could find all kinds of different creative outlets and had hundreds of different lenders and banks and everybody we would work with. And uh, then that came into doing it uh, again, kind of working my way up the totem pole, right? I love to work uh, and yep. get up the chain. So we went from broker to brokering to now being our own lender and paying for all those licenses. You know, I had to put up over a million dollars just to get the licenses, right? Yep. So you guys can all take advantage of that million dollars that I had to put up just to pass the compliance to get the state licenses. And uh, yeah, just keep growing. So we're, we're into growing. Me and my partners are into uh, investments ourselves. So we're into I guess kind of getting to the core of it, right? Moving our way up the food chain and we can continue to move our way up the food chain uh, as we, as we grow. So uh, we're excited to take our people with us and our clients with us. And we're all about giving our benefit to our clients, right? We're not going up the food chain to make more money for ourselves. We're going up the food chain so that our clients can make more money on their deals. Absolutely. Right? Getting better rates and terms and uh, more creative options for our clients that then allow them to get more, uh, you know, basically liquidity is really what we're all about here, right? So absolutely kind of so what do you progression. say the biggest mistake people who are creating these notes or gathering information? What are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen in the space of these creation of notes? Uh well, I mean I would say first off, there's definitely a whole uh you know continuum of these notes right i mean I've, I've seen one page notes to you know full on uh, uh you know standard notes that we have so my goal is always to try to uh securitize a loan right so this is probably something you guys aren't really used to you guys are really thinking about and nathan brought it up earlier mm -hmm. about having an exit strategy so the way that we uh basically uh, position our notes is it so there's they're securitizable right so it needs mm -hmm. to be standard usually Fannie or Freddie is kind of the standard uh, industry note so we need to make sure ours is standard but then every investor wants a little nuance and stuff so uh, you guys should all be thinking kind of the same right so we're protecting ourselves we're paying law firms to make sure the right note the right language is there so that we can then sell that to uh, sure. a, a larger uh, correspondent usually that then securitizes it. So if the note's not securitizable, then it's really, you're not going to have those exit strategies that you really want. So uh, for me, looking at these creative notes, when we're taking people out of them, right, I don't really see them getting created like you guys do. But when we're taking people out, um, uh, it is interesting when, you know, they're, they're not really standard. And I have a feeling that uh, that you guys deal with this all the time where people are put themselves at risk, as you mentioned, not being able to foreclose properly or mm -hmm. not being able to then get out of it if they need to resell it. Uh, so um, I'm sure those are some of your challenges. But again, I haven't been there myself. But coming from the other end, uh, that's what I could see uh, being the biggest mistakes because I wouldn't want that note. Right. I'm taking them out of a note and putting them in a note that can be securitized and can be fully enforceable, fully foreclosed in all different states. And that's what our license is for that you mentioned before. So, sure. uh, I mean, I would uh, recommend to your listeners to put the, themselves in my shoes, right? You would want to securitize it the same way I do, right? I, I would say it and make sure your note is ready to go. If that day comes, as Nathan mentioned, when you get sick and needs to go, get top dollar for it. And uh you did mention some due diligence. I don't know what due diligence your guys are doing on average because I don't even really see that, right? I see the note. I see the payoff. That's really all I see on the takeout end, right? Uh, but I don't know what due diligence your your people are doing up front. I would recommend uh, they also do more of that. And you guys mentioned you had 